What's going on guys, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Today I'm breaking down the kick serve technique of Riley Opelka, and I'll show you why his kick serve is the best on tour. Coming up. All right guys, let's jump in now and actually look at Riley Opelka's kick serve technique and talk about two big reasons why his kick serve jumps higher than anybody else's in the world. We got Riley over on this side over here on the far side. And what I wanna look at first of all and talk about is the fact that he's so tall, right? So he's seven feet tall. So one of the most important things with a tall server is that when you're hitting a ball or an object and it's dropping from a high point, it should bounce higher than somebody's that's dropping from a low point. So let's look at this kick serve though for just a second here. A couple things we notice right off the bat Ball toss is not in a position where he's tossing the ball and really getting it on this side of his body, okay? He's keeping the ball a little bit more in line with the head as he tosses it and makes contact. So he's not having to arch his back too much, which helps prevent injury. The biggest mistake I see people make on a kick serve is they toss the ball too far behind themselves or they toss the ball too far to their left if they're right-handed, which forces their back to really bend and can cause injury. So if you're doing that to hit a kick, you're gonna hurt yourself, don't do it. I've actually had students in the past that have come in from other instructors in the past and actually broken their back or broken vertebrae in their back because of their kick serve toss. So make sure you're not doing that on your kick serve toss, okay? It's super important. But from here, what we see with Riley is this monster bounce. And when I say monster, I'm talking monster because if you look at who he's practicing with here, we've got Jensen Brooksby on the near side, Brooksby's six foot four, and just FYI, this footage came from 12 KGP Tennis's YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked their stuff out, make sure you visit them over there and check out their stuff. It's awesome. But Brooksby is six foot four. He's a tall player who is taking the kick serve and returning it from close to the baseline area. He's trying to cut it off because of how high bouncing Opelka's kick serve is. He doesn't want it to go even higher. I truly believe that if Brooksby didn't take it at the point he's taking it now, it could have kept rising and gone even higher. It's very possible, okay? So again, Brooksby, six foot four, but having to take this well above his head height, which leads me to believe that the actual contact on this is well over seven feet in the air, which is really remarkable. He's getting that kind of bounce. Also, if you look at Brooksby's feet, right, his feet are off the ground. He's being forced to leave the ground as tall as he is to try to hit this kick serve. It's really, truly remarkable. So let's go back for a second here real quick. You might say, well, Jason, you could easily let this kick serve drop if you just took this position, Brooksby's in close to the baseline, right? And you just backed off the baseline and went way back by the back fence. But the problem guys were having against Opelka's kick serve this last week in Houston were his kick serve was jumping up in this area above the top wall or back fence area in Houston. They were jumping that far back and that high. So taking a position where you're really far back also wasn't effective against his kick. It was really, truly remarkable. On bigger courts and bigger stadiums, like you might see at you know the US Open or the French Open, guys probably will be able to drop back all the way back towards the back fence to return it. But in courts that are a little shorter or practice courts, good luck. So anyways, from there, again, Brooksby doing a good job trying to get close to the baseline and prevent that thing from jumping up so high, but he was even late here. Another tactic guys were being forced to use because they couldn't back up or they couldn't take it at baseline is they were being forced to actually take the return from inside the baseline to force themselves in before the thing rose up really high. And that's also really uncomfortable for the returner. So we're gonna move on to an example now of Opelka hitting his kick from the near side. Okay, so we'll get that clip up real quick here. And here it is right here. So now we've got Opelka on the near side serving from the do side, again, against Brooksby in this clip right here. A little practice point play. And we've got a lot of keys to Opelka's serve. And a couple things I wanna point out. There's two big ones that give him that major jump on his kick. But one thing I like to point out here that people can learn from is when you're a pinpoint server and you slide your back foot up, or that's kind of what you do with your footwork, right? So you can see him slide the back foot up right here. When you're that style of server, one thing I wanna make sure people do at home is don't take that back foot and slide it around your front foot right here. That's one mistake people make. It ends up opening up the hips prematurely and it just doesn't work very well with your rhythm. You don't wanna get those hips in a position where they open up too early, okay? And then you over rotate. So it's a great job of keeping that back foot back 
And here are a couple keys to why his kick jumps so high. The first one is something that we pointed out in a video five, six, seven years ago with Milos Ronic, and that is that the edge of his racket and the tip of his racket on his kick get outside of his hitting hand, okay? They're not in line with each other. And it almost gets outside, or looks like it's outside of the hitting elbow. He's got a lot of flexibility in the hitting shoulder where he gets this position right here. Most servers do not get this position. Milos Ronic gets this position. Andy Roddick is another guy that hit this position on the serve, but Opelka does it, and what makes his serve so deadly is he's doing it, and he's contacting the ball at a height higher than any of those other servers. So there's one thing that we know, right, about basic ball bounce heights. The higher you're having to contact a ball, the higher it's getting hit from, when it hits down on the other side of the court, it should jump higher in general, okay? That's how it should work. So when you're seven feet tall like Opelka and you hit that ball and drive it down into the court and drive it back up, it should bounce higher than someone who's a foot shorter than you, even a half a foot shorter than you. So Opelka combines two deadly things into one and nobody's done this before at his height. He combines this outside position of the racket head before it goes up to contact, which means he's getting a ton of racket head speed, more than a normal person. And then when it hits this side of the court, because it's coming from a high point to begin with, it should jump up higher than a normal serve if you combine those two factors, okay? So if you look at Brooksby over on the other side again, he is reaching up and making contact at right around eye level here, give or take, on this particular second serve return. And he's inside the baseline with his position. So he's trying to cut this thing off early before it jumps even higher. And he's doing the you know best job he possibly can. He did a great job with these returns, but look at that contact height that he's being forced into on this particular stroke. It's, it's just remarkable what he's having to do to intercept it before it goes even higher. And then he hits a short ball there and that gives Opelka the chance right away in the point to pounce on a short forehand, okay? But again, if we just go back for a second, what are the two main factors Opelka combines together that nobody else has ever done before? Number one, he gets a position here on the outside with the racket head not falling in line with the body like most servers do, but it's going to the outside of the hitting hand here and even the hitting elbow, extreme flexibility in the shoulder, which creates more racket head speed and then from that position, he's also, again, contacting the ball at a height that most people don't contact the ball at a height of. So it's going to bounce higher from a high position once it actually hits the ground. And it's going to jump up against his opponents, which creates a nightmare scenario for anyone that's not his height. Even against John Isner this week at the clay court event in Houston, Isner was having trouble with Opelka's kick serve and he's as tall as Opelka is. All right, so that wraps it up for this video on Riley Opelka's kick serve technique. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time.